So some of you guys have been asking, how do you build a section of vinyl privacy fence up a hill? Today, we're gonna to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so in this scenario, what we're doing is we're, we're faking a hill because we don't have a hill. You're still gonna set your post just as you normally would. The whole reason that we have one that's so much taller and one that's level is because we're simulating a hill. We don't have a hill, we're working on flat ground. We're pretending like we are on a hill. If you're going up an incline, each post should be out of the ground roughly the same amount to make sure it's replicating the terrain of the ground that it's going up. First things first. So we're gonna go ahead and find the angle and we're gonna find it the easy way. So we need to be about right there when we're all said and done. We're gonna go from that inch and a quarter mark down to the factory end of the bottom of the rail. You're just roughly finding that angle so that, that way your rail is gonna fit in there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and chop that. As we chop that, what we're gonna do is all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a measurement. Now that we have to find the overall length of our bottom rail, we still have to measure from face of the metal post to the face of the metal post on the receiving side because we're using a no dig system. So I'm going to go on the very bottom of the hole. I'm gonna push all the way into the metal post. I'm gonna go on the bottom of the next hole and read and it says I have 83 and a quarter from metal post to metal post. If you're not using a no dig system, you need to add three extra inches to the overall length, inch and a half per side. And still, it's highly recommended to cut that angle on there. So on the very bottom, we're gonna mark 83 and a quarter. We're gonna set it right on that line. We're gonna put a mark at 83, to 83 and a quarter again and we're gonna draw and connect these lines. And it's gonna give us our angle on the other end. In order to find the angle of what our rail needs to be cut at, our saw is on zero. We're gonna rotate to a f about a six degree and see if our blade matches up. We're gonna keep rotating until that saw blade is parallel with that mark. Right there. Now we can look at our saw. We're at a 10 degree angle. So when we're all said and done, our rail is gonna look like this. That's actually needs to be this way. Because if you get it wrong, you're gonna to have to recut your angle. Because there's only one direction to install this rail now. See, if we try to go that way, our angles are backwards. Versus if we flip it, if we cut it right, and when you insert into the post and feel the metal post, if you're using a no dig system, you should be able to feel it line right up with that post on the face. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn this post and it does get a little tight here. As I get that side in, I can twist it right in. So that's the angle of our uphill imaginary slope. And we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that we can't pull that rail out, which we cannot. So therefore we did do it right. So we have the right angle, we have the right length. We can go to step two. We can go ahead and put our U-channel on And for attaching our U-channel, we like to use these little Phillips pan head self-tapping screws. We found that the self-tapper helps to go through the vinyl just a little bit faster so the screw's not trying to walk on you. If you need some, make sure and see the link below. Cut, cut, we're gonna have to cut. We're gonna have to try again tomorrow. I, I kind of hurt my thumb. You gotta cut? Yeah, I gotta go to the nurse's station. I'll, be, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and install our pickets. To sit perfectly flat, the picket wants to be like that. That doesn't quite work. Now if we go here, we can see right here, our picket is almost trying to come out of our rail again. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to angle cut our pickets. So we're actually gonna go and find the center. So we're gonna go to five and three quarters. So from right there, and we're gonna go from there to a 10 degree angle over this way. So this is where it gets really tricky because what you ultimately want to do, if your angle is so steep, is you want to go from point to point, take that 10 degree angle and call it good. If you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to cut so much off that your picket's now going to be short and it's not going to fit in between the two rails. So in order to compensate for that, what you have to do is you have to take half the angle off on the bottom and you have to take the other half on the top. So you're not gonna cut all the way from point A to point B. 
you're going to go from the center of the picket and then take that 10 degrees there and on the top you have to mirror it so you're going to go from the 10 degrees and angle cut there on the top we're taking the right side and on the bottom we have to take the left side okay i'll go cut them real quick yeah i'll go cut them So after your picket is cut, it should look something like this. After your picket is cut, it should look something like this. Slight angle here, and then some off the top here. Ta-da! Okay. So now that we almost made it, we need to rip one picket. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and measure from the post to that little rib right there, cause that's a tongue. So I have inch and a quarter. And before I took that measurement, I did make sure I can't squeeze those any further. And I've got the same measurement on the top. Now that's such a short piece, I don't think we have to angle cut it. So we're going to go ahead and try to put the rail on there. And if the rail doesn't slide in the hole, the answer is it's a little too tall. So that's where the rail is going to be going through. Inch and three eighths. Let me see what kind of an insertion we have. It might be all right. We're going to be all right. It just looks really, really funny. But just to show you where that rail is going to sit at, if we go from here to here and use our tape as our line, everything that's above the tape will be inside that rail. I've got a little cutoff piece here. So if we would have left that picket alone and left it on there, we'd be a little too tall to fit inside of our rail. That's the reason that we have to take just a little off the top and a little off the bottom. And just one more hang to remember, when you're doing with angles and inclines, your uh, holes start getting a little bit tighter. So if you're having a hard time and your rail doesn't fit, you might have to take a router on site and widen that hole, make it taller. Not wider, but a little bit taller. All right. If everything is done correctly and you followed everything to a T, when you get to this point right here, you shouldn't be able to see any daylight through the top rail. And all your pickets should be in the bottom rail. But what you're looking for is you're looking for on the seams at every picket. You shouldn't be able to see just a sliver of daylight. And you shouldn't be able to push any of your pickets out. If you can push any of your pickets out, one of them's too short and you need to recut it and you need to cut it again. Just from our wind test series, if you have one picket that is too short and didn't make it into the rail, all it takes to cause a section of vinyl fence to blow out is one picket to fail. One picket to fail will cause the rest of that section to blow out. If you want to watch a video on how we install a vinyl fence and cover all the major steps of everything that's involved, make sure and watch that video right here. And if you want to see the vinyl no dig fence system and how that's done, make sure and watch that video right here. This is Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company and we hope you have a good dang day.